You're watching Flow Working, the entrepreneur's podcast. I'm your host, Megan Anderson. More people than ever are starting the entrepreneur journey and learning a lot in the process. On this show, I sit down with regular people who are running all types of businesses to discuss the ideas, opportunities, and strategies they're using to build, grow, and thrive as an entrepreneur. Before we get started, make sure you tap the button and subscribe to the channel. Then hit like and share your favorite videos with others. Okay, now on with the show. Hello, welcome to this episode. I'm your host, Megan Anderson, and today I'm joined by my guest, Jess Sato. Jess knows the pain of being tied to money, benefits, and stability when what you really want is freedom. She knows you don't need to waste time, money, and drowning in the sea of shiny objects online and bad advice. You want a partner who helps you do so much more than just leave your job. Her deep understanding of the journey from corporate to entrepreneur is why she started her own journey as a corporate exit and startup business consultant. Now she works alongside corporate women to help them leave the nine to five grind on their terms to build businesses they're passionate about. Jess is on a mission to give others a safe space where you can feel like you can live your dreams because she knows real growth and change happen in the process. With Jess as a trusted partner and the process, she's here to light your path as you reach for your goals. Jess, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me. So we get to talk a bit about the fun journey of leaving the nine to five today. So let's start a little bit with your own journey on that, because I know that's something you experienced. So share with the audience a little bit about what you kind of experienced as you left that stability to start your own uh, consulting firm. So mine is in some ways a lesson in what not to do. (laughs) And I think that's why I'm really passionate about what you should do. And I say should loosely because everybody has a different path. But, you know, for me, I had spent about 10 10 years in the corporate world doing leadership development, coaching, um, training, facilitation. I really loved that work. I still love that work and I do some of it still. But I really, you know, I was a newer mom. I was in the classroom all the time. My husband was traveling and there was just no bandwidth. And I kept asking myself, like, there has got to be a better way than this. And, you know, there's a whole series of stories where I'm like, this should never have happened. (laughs) And we maybe could dive into those later, but there just came a moment where I realized I can't keep doing this. It's not, it's not good for me. It's not good for my family. Um, And ultimately, it's not good for the people I was doing the work with and for. And so, you know, I did to a degree build a plan to leave, but I didn't do it for the purposes of being an entrepreneur. Mm. I was like, oh, I'll just kind of figure it out. I mean, so my exit strategy was all about, you know, figuring out the money part of walking away from a big corporate Mm -hmm. salary. And... I thought, well, I'll just figure the rest out. And honestly, that transition was pretty challenging. I mean, if your whole identity is wrapped up in, you know, your job and your work, all of a sudden now you don't have those things, you know, your achievement, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't have those things and you really are in this sort of death spiral. And I really struggled to figure out my path forward. And I, kind of fell into entrepreneurship accidentally. Mm-hmm. And and that's why I say it's not, you know, for people who are really seriously thinking about leaving the corporate world, I want them to have a plan, whether that's for entrepreneurship, whether that's their next best step, mm-hmm. to really have a plan and to have done the work, to have had some hard conversations about what those roles will start to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, it took me gosh, probably seven or eight years to find my way. I had a business, but it was sort of an accidental business that happened to do really well. (laughs) So, you know, does that happen? Yes, but I don't think it's the norm, nor do I encourage it. So, (laughs) you know, kind of like tail end, don't do this. um, And let's let's put you on the right foot from the get-go. Yeah, no, that's uh you got you did get the the lucky, you know, the lucky draw there by getting a, a business out the you know, that was successful in that time because you're right. Most people end up somewhere back in a maybe not even a, a you know, worse 9 to 5 because they're like, "Oh, yeah. now I just have to have something. I'm desperate." So, 
Sure. You're right about that strategy, that plan. So let's talk a bit about that. As you start to make that exit plan, as you're like, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur. All right. Everybody talks about business strategies, but share with us what, you know, what's important about having that business strategy and really getting consistent with it from go, especially as you're transitioning. Yeah. So for me, you know, I, I think there is some real value in, you know, creating business plans, but for me, it goes a little bit back from there. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I really want people to know why they want to leave, because if you don't know that, you know, if you're, you're just like, I got to get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Running from something really is not a good recipe for success. So I really encourage people to do the work of figuring out, okay, why, why do I want to leave? And what is it that I want to create? And when you know some of those foundational stuff, then it becomes easier to start to put the pieces in place. And for me, there's a lot around life design, really knowing what it is that you want your life to look like. And, you know, I have a whole model that I use called strategy, you know, and, you know, it starts with what's the state of affairs, like what's happening in your life, what what's happening in your work, in your career that really is important for you to think about. And then tapping into some of that, you know, life design, what is it that you want to create? What, um, you know, what do you need in order to be successful? What is your definition of success? Because it's guaranteed going to look different than the corporate or professional track. And after you've done that stuff, that to me is what opens the door for you to actually design the business strategy. Mm. So it shapes, you know, how many clients you want to be working with? What is your price point? You, how do you want to do the work? Um, you know, how much time do you want to be spending on a given day or a week, right? All of those things are really important because then they shape your offer, the way you do your marketing, um, you know, all of that. And I think we tend to see people jumping straight to, okay, this is my offer. This is my, you know, this is how I'm going to do it. And we go to all the networking events. Those are all good things, but it helps when you've got all the foundational elements in place before you dive into the actual business doing. So I think that the strategy piece is really foundational and I want people to be building businesses on purpose, mm -hmm. with purpose yeah. that are tied to their bigger life goals. Because yeah. otherwise what's the point, right? What's I mean, you might yeah. be staying in corporate yep. because it's you're not going to be able to do the things that you really want to do when you don't have a, a really solid plan. That's, that's hugely, hugely important for people to know that, yeah, that strategy. But I love that you said, you know, really start with your why, because, you know, you, you've walked this entrepreneurial journey, especially mm -hmm. in that first year or two, you're actually going to work more than you did your nine to five. Without a doubt, <laughs> without a doubt. Oh my gosh. And if you're not tied to your, why am I doing this? Oh, those days are hard if you, you know, yeah. oh my gosh, why am, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And so that's super important. But it becomes, you know, it's like the North Star. I mean, that's how I talk about it. I mean, here we're all, obviously in Colorado, we're all about the hiking in the mountains. And for me, what is the North Star? Because if you know what you're trying to create and why you want that, mm -hmm. then it becomes much easier to sort of take the different switchbacks and to, you know, deviate from the trail. Mm -hmm but know where you're still going, yeah. right? It's sort of, you have this like guiding force, this situational awareness that allows you to, to stay on target, even if it feels like you're off track, right? And we've all been there. If, you, mm -hmm. if, if you're a hiker or anything, right? You know, you're bound to get off track somewhere, Yep. right? Then you, you're like, oh, well, I'm trying to get to that waterfall or I'm trying to get to, you know, this glacial lake or whatever it might be. Um, and so when you know that it's easier, and I feel the same is true in business, when you know what you really want to create mm -hmm. and who you want to create it for and the impact it can have on your life or other people's lives, that's yeah. when everything slots into place. It's, it's amazing how that, you know, I'm, I'm like you, I took the really long non-guided path to get here. And as I finally <laughs> got here throughout the whole journey, it was always like, I really want to work with entrepreneurs and how do I make that happen? And everyone kept telling me, you don't want to work with entrepreneurs. You, you just, no, no. And I'm like, 
Yeah, no, that's why I'm here. Like, this is my why. And so I get it. You gotta yeah. stick to that why even when all the noise is like, nope, nope, that's yeah. not where you're headed. And you're like, yes, that's where I'm headed. So, you know, and let's talk a little bit about consistency because this is hugely important and people, I think this is a big struggle, especially coming from corporate where someone's telling you, do you know, here's your deadline, here's how you get there. Like, how do you work with people to help them understand what it means to be consistent as you take the, the, this new journey? Yeah, this is, I feel like I've been talking about consistency, like, every day for weeks and months now, because I think for a lot of new entrepreneurs, and I know this was true for me, we get really (laughs) sidetracked, especially if we're taking the non-guided path. Um, And and in doing that, we get distracted by the latest thing, right? I mean, everybody has been distracted by shiny objects. And we sort of joke about that, but it is, in some parts necessary, right? You need to know and see what's available to you. But at some point, you have got to pick something and stick with it. And I find that many of the women in particular that I'm working with struggle with consistency. And I think it's because we're being told some stuff that's really not serving us. Like, Mm -hmm. I remember right when I got started, the, the wisdom was be on all the social platforms. You need to post like four times a day. It's all going to be brand new content. And, you know, honestly, I did that for a year, multiple social platforms, constant content creation. And it, it did not serve me, right? Because the message was diluted. There was no, there was no community building in all of that. And, And so for me, I really like to help entrepreneurs hone in on exactly what are you trying to create? What is your offer and building your strategy from there? And, you know, that includes things like what, what, if any social platforms you should be on, what is your method for bringing in new clients or getting in front of other people's audiences and whatever you choose, right? Because quite frankly, there's not a lot of wrong answers, right? In entrepreneurship, like you get to decide and if you can make it work, awesome. But the only way you're gonna make it work is if you stick with something. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the thing I've been talking a lot about lately is that, you know, we, we try something for a month, we expect some rapid result because that's what like a lot of these like big online gurus, Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get out of the box about this, talk about, and in doing that, they make you feel like you're failing when in reality there is so many other things that needed to be put in place to help you be successful with that particular strategy that you couldn't possibly have seen the result that you think you could have and so i say to the women in my group programs for example pick something for 90 to 120 days and you do that consistently yep. and consistently to me looks a lot like you know an interval a time interval and a method that works with you so it doesn't need to be every day it doesn't need to be constant content creation like let's get off of some of those tr- you know kind of crazy treadmills and do stuff that works with our energy that works with you know the life that we're trying to create so you know i just this is this hands down to me is one of the biggest problems that entrepreneurs are facing yep. lack of consistency in their business yep. no i hear you like i i i had to get real with myself just last year and go it does not work for me in my mental and emotional state to go be doing networking in person big group networking mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I had to find a way to, from my dining room table, which is really like this, because yeah. this is where I thrive. This is where I succeed. And being honest with that, oh man. And then you get consistent with that and whoo. Game changer. Game changer, because you're, you're choosing what works for you, not what worked for the extrovert in the world. Like the extroverts are giving, yeah. and you're like, that doesn't work for me. And doing what works for you, super, yeah. super important. Yeah. Super important. I mean, I've got a colleague and she she's like, I don't like being on social media. It 
puts me in a bad mental space, even if I'm on there for business, right? And I said, well, let's find a different way. Like it, it doesn't have to be the way, like many, many people built businesses before social media ever yep. existed. There's some very tried and true principles yep. that you can be going into and can be just as, if not more successful. Absolutely. So the thing. So I love that you did that for yourself because it, let's, let's just stop with the, I should be doing this. Oh, right? like, no, because no because then you're, then you're just beating on yourself, which, oh, we could talk about that all day. But so mm-hmm. let's talk about another key component that as we transition, the thing that we really don't understand, and a lot of people don't want to talk about money. We've got our own mm-hmm. stories about money and let's get real. We're here to make money. We're here to create a life, to provide value. And that talks about pricing. Setting a price that speaks to your value, that speaks to your customers and who you're actually attracting. This is a struggle. And I think, I I don't know about men. I work with a lot of women too. How do you work with people around, you know, changing that pricing story, getting comfortable with that pricing, setting something that's really accurate to the value they're they're providing? Yeah, this has become a little bit of a joke within my, my own community because I'm constantly talking about the need to raise our prices. Mm-hmm. And it, like I said, it's become a bit of a joke, but there is so much truth around this. And I get it. I mean, I started out, my prices were ridiculously low. Yep. And over time, I have just continued to raise and raise and raise. And what really did it for me was um, I was. I was working with a coach and she talked a lot about value-based pricing. I'd never heard of that before. And I thought there's something here, right? Most of us are pricing based on our corporate salaries. We're pricing based on what we think people should or would spend because of our own money stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was like, oh, I would never pay that. Yep. But somebody else would, right? (laughs) Like Totally. Right? I, I really have embraced this idea of value-based pricing and really getting my clients to think a lot about what is the long-term value in addition to the immediate value that a person gets from working with you. And you know, if you've never thought about it like this, it's super impactful because I think a lot of times we focus on, okay, well, I'm giving them 12 hours of my time time, you know, the value they're getting is X. But if you start to think about what you gave them in those 12 hours or whatever, three months, however much, and what they can continue to do with that over and over and over for themselves becomes a complete game changer. And then when you factor in, you know, what that value looks like, how you came about it, what you're bringing to the table and equipping them with, and what it cost you yeah. to get there. Now, all of a sudden, your, you know, your three month coaching package or your three month service offering means a whole lot more for what it can do for someone. And so I have done a lot of work, A, for myself, but also with my own clients to really get them thinking about this differently. This is not about hours. Mm-hmm. This is not about the immediate impact. This is that plus yeah. how it's going to serve that client for months, years, decades yep. to come. Yeah. And it, and I think when we start to think about our pricing like that, all of a sudden it becomes a little bit easier to elevate those prices and to say them. Cause that's the other problem, right? Like, oh my God, I, I, I can't, I can't quite bring myself to say my, my thing is $5,000 or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. And when you know that the value is like five, 10, 15 times that, you're like, well, that's a freaking steal. They need this. Like anybody would be like, yeah, you know, ridiculous to not do this, right? Especially when all the other pieces are in place, like really compelling offer, really working with people who you can in fact help. Once all those elements are together, and that, you know, that's the work, honestly. Um, but once we put those elements in place, then it becomes much easier to price ourselves properly. So, and then, you know, then everything shifts yeah. in the business. Now you start making money, you have more freedom and flexibility, which is goes back to that why 
yeah. from the very get go. From the very beginning. And so it's, yeah. it, you know, as, as we come to the end of here, I want you to talk about this last piece because you said it, the hardest part is going, oh yeah, no, let's work together. And it's fine, Helen, you know, and we, we eat the money words and, and putting voice to what it is that we're really trying to say. And especially when we're talking about value and especially when we have that potential client in front of us. Um, no, you know, honest engine. Oh man, struggle, yeah. struggle, struggle for years to go. No, this is what I charge, and, and I don't have to explain it to you, but this is what it is. Yeah. So, why is having that powerful voice so helpful when we're we're going out there about our businesses? Yeah. So, I, in addition to working with women entrepreneurs, I do TEDx speaker coaching, and that's really where this started to filter into mm -hmm. into my work. And, you know, the heart of TED Talks is all about, you know, your big idea. And the more I started thinking about this, I thought, well, isn't that what entrepreneurship is? We all have this big idea inside of us mm -hmm. and it's the thing, right? Like we may both be working with women entrepreneurs. We may both be helping them grow their businesses, but the idea behind it, the thing that we're passionate about is the thing that really sets us apart. And you know, I, gosh, maybe for three and a half years, really wasn't using my voice. Mm. You know, I was saying all the right things. I was, um, you know, I, I was saying what I thought people wanted to hear. And it wasn't until I realized, wow, you are in some ways suppressing your own voice that you know, I just didn't feel free. And so for me now, I, I've started to think about this a little bit like we have this big idea, this thing that makes us who we are, that we're passionate about. And those are rarely the things that we're talking about. You know, we spend a lot of our time talking about sort of the nuts and bolts of our businesses, the marketing, this, you know, the message. Mm -hmm. But to me, using your voice is all about helping people see who you are and what your business is really about. And that's really rooted in what you value, right? So for me, you know, that looks like helping women entrepreneurs abroad and developing countries. That's rooted in my own personal story um, and wanting to make sure that we provide a bridge that goes both ways of mentorship, of funding, et cetera. It looks like um, being passionate about bullying prevention in K through 12 schools. It's work I still do on the side. Um, it looks like, you know, healthy living and movement and being outside. Like, those are the things that are part of our voice that I think we're not using to our advantage. You know, and, and on a fun note, like boy bands. I love boy bands. I'm never going to not love boy bands. I just know myself. And, and this has become a, a, a thing, right? It's a way for people to connect with you, yeah. whether they like boy bands or not or whether they care about being outside, yeah. right? That These are ways that help people know who you are. They help you see what is of value to the person that you wanna work with. And until we start saying those things, our message is just that. It's just sort of a, okay, another business coach, another person who, you know, fill in the blank, as opposed to, oh my gosh, this girl totally gets me. She is passionate about X, Y, Z. I really relate to that. I wonder if she could help me. Yeah. So I would love to see all of us start to say what we really want to say. I mean, that's the question I ask all my TEDx clients. You know, what do you really want to say? Yep. When you strip away all the stuff, yep. what do you really want to say? Right. Yep. Those are things that are super, super important. Yep. It, it is. I <laughs> for For years, I was the same way. Like, you know, being a survivor of domestic violence is my stage that I stand on and I will never not say it again, ever in yeah, any context, because it's, that it speaks to who I am, where yeah. I came from, where I'm going, who I talk to, how I help, all of that. But we can't, yeah. we, we want to squash that voice or, you know, I have three crazy dogs who didn't bother this podcast. Yay. <laughs> So Jess, thank you so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed hearing you, um, you know, share your own story, how you help people, bringing your voice to this stage. As people are watching this or listening to this, what is one really great way for people to connect with you today? 
I would love for you to connect with me on LinkedIn. I spend a good amount of time over there. It's, it's just a, such a cool place to be um, where people are talking freely about the things that are important to them, sort of like we just talked about. Um, so you can find me over on LinkedIn, Jess-Sato um, is my handle, and um, I look forward to seeing you over there. All right, to the audience, that link is down below as well as other links to get connected with Jess on LinkedIn. Start a conversation. It's a great way to start, uh, you know, getting more from Jess. Again, thank you for joining me on the show today. I really enjoyed sharing this time with you and providing this great space for you to share with our audience. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, to my audience, thank you for joining us today. And I am wishing you peace as you flow off to the rest of your business day. We will talk again soon. Thank you for watching this episode of Flow Working, the Entrepreneur's Podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. And while you're here, watch another episode for more advice about being a successful entrepreneur.